Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best day of the week. It is Star Wars Talk Tuesdays, the day where all we do is talk Star Wars. It's like just a complete ripoff of the John Campia show, except all we do is take Star Wars topics and questions. Nothing all that deep, nothing all that profound, just a bunch of Star Wars nerds sitting around and talking about Star Wars. Now, I'm going to be taking the topics and questions that you guys have sent in to me. How do you send in a question? Well, it's going to be changing, but for now, keep sending in your Star Wars Talk Tuesdays questions to the John Campia podcast at gmail.com. That's the John Campia podcast at gmail.com. And this is important, guys. Two things. Keep it to 90 words or less. And also make sure in the subject line, you put SWTT. That's Star Wars Talk Tuesdays. Put SWTT in the subject line. And that's how I know that that question that's coming in is for Star Wars Talk Tuesdays. Got a whole bunch of stuff picked out, but I'm kind of excited today because today, for the first time since I started back up the John Campia YouTube channel, I'm going to have a guest on the show with me here. And I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction. For those of you who've been following me for a long time, I mean a long time. You might recognize the name Rodney Brazo. Now, Rodney was, uh, first of all, a friend of mine for decades. We've been friends. But also, he was a writer on my site, The Movie Blog. And then after I left The Movie Blog, he was running The Movie Blog for a while. He's done another a uh, number of other movie-related stuff online. And simply when it comes to the expanded universe and Star Wars Legends... I have never known anybody that knows as much stuff or is as passionate for expanded universe stuff as this dude. So, ladies and gentlemen, my friend, Rodney Brazo. Rodney, how you doing? Not too bad. John, how you doing? I'm doing great. You're all the way up in my hometown. You're up in Hamilton. I am. Um, oh, sorry. I got, I, I, I got managed to get tickets. I managed to get tickets to Hamilton. Yeah. Well, yeah. hey, I actually saw Hamilton the other night. Yes, I don't know how that happened. I don't. You know what? <laughs> Anne bought the, literally, I'm not kidding. Anne bought the tickets. Sorry, this is Hamilton talk. So <laughs> Anne bought the tickets to see Hamilton a year in advance. And the only way we could get them is if we bought a season package for seven of the shows at the Pantages. So wow. we had to buy. So each one of our tickets ended up being $700. And I remember when she was buying them, like, do you really want to see the show this much? And she said, yes. And you know, worth seven more. Totally worth it. It was so good. Okay, with all that out of the way, we're going to get into our first question of the day. And our first question today, once again, comes from you guys. And the first question comes to us from Bradley Drabisky, uh, Drabizisk. I can't pronounce your name, dude. And it says, hey, John, big fan. Thank you so much, Bradley. Since the Star Wars logo is on the Last Jedi poster is red... Do you think that Lucasfilm will make the logo and the opening crawl in the film red instead of the traditional yellow logo? Thanks for taking my question. Well, thanks a lot for the question, man. Rodney, let's start with you. What do you think? Are they going to be uh, um, keeping the traditional one or do you think they're going to be going to red? They, they've they slightly deviated from tradition with the crawl in a couple instances, but I can't see them changing away from the yellow. If they were going to change away from the yellow, I think they might have done it with Force Awakens. Um, that being said, just because I'm old enough, a <laughs> lot of a lot of Return of the Jedi ads, posters, the logo on toys and cards and everything was also in red. And it didn't change to red in that movie. So this is the one thing that jumps out to me. Look, yes, I remember when they revealed the logo for The Last Jedi. Mm -hmm. Me and a lot of people were like, whoa, I mean, that it really, yeah. it, it stands out because we are expecting the yellow and it comes out and uh, you guys can see it's right here, here on the screen. You guys can see it. It's red. And that really stood out. But here's the main reason why I think they'll keep the crawl yellow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's strictly from a aesthetic point of view. And the reality is this reading yellow on that black outer space background is a hell of a lot easier than trying to read. This is a relatively dark red. I mean, it's not super dark, but it's a relatively dark red. I think the simple, practical, pragmatic issue of the audience being able to read that crawl, I think it becomes more challenging if it's yeah. this color red against that black background. And I just think like I have perfect vision and I think I would have a challenge with it. So I don't know, what do you think, Rod? I don't know that I'd have a challenge with it as much. It would definitely be not as easy. So I've definitely yeah. classified as that. But the other thing um, 
is there are certain traditions in the crawl, um, like certain words being capitalized, you know, bringing certain uh, phrases, planets, uh, events, uh, factions, all being identified with all caps and everything. So they've definitely gone out of their way to make sure certain things are more visible than others on That's top true. of on top of a, a high contrast bright yellow on uh, on black. And yellow is not really a, a color that we associate with Star Wars in a lot of things. Uh, there's no yellow lightsabers. Uh, so why yellow? Why was yellow brought in there? And I think you hit it right on the nose. Is I think it's all about just visual contrast. It's easy to read. It's just good design. Yeah. All right. Well, the big question, guys, what do you think? Jump into the comments section below and let us know. I, so I think, it's, so Rodney, you and I are on the same page here. We think they're going to keep yeah. probably that yellow in the crawl. I would be very surprised to see anything different. However, I'm wondering if they're going to deviate again instead of having the crawl and then pan down to a planet, um, which episode two broke because it panned up. But, yeah, uh, it's the only one. It's the only, the only one, one to pan up. It's the only one. So they they, they kind of made you think, hey, there's no rules anymore. And then in episode three, they went back. And of course, in episode seven, there's again. But it should be interesting to see what happens immediately after the crawl, because I do pay attention to that. Only on a Star Wars discussions show <laughs> will you hear nerds sit around and talk for 12 minutes about Which what, the camera pan. what color will the font be? Yeah, anyway, so yeah. that's we're losers. Okay, let's go on to the next question. And the next question today comes to us from Nate Being, who writes, The final trailers for both The Force Awakens and Rogue One came out in mid-October. Since we are already approaching that date, do you think that the next episode eight trailer will be the only official trailer they release? Well, you know, first of all, I'm not 100% that's necessarily true that October was the last one because, well, aside from the theatrical trailers, there was still a hell of a lot of TV spots that Teasers came out. and little bits, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So now we have heard Mark Hamill say that, I mean, he put out that tweet last week that, Watch uh, the football game on October 9th for no particular reason. Now, of course, we know that for The Force Awakens, they released the big trailer during Monday Night Football, and it was hugely watched and all that kind of stuff. Yep. Then I think the Death Squad from Disney paid a visit to Mark Hamill's house. Mark Hamill <laughs> pulled the tweet down. So whether that's true or not, whether that actually meant something, whether Mark Hamill was just kind of playing games with us a little bit, we'll have to wait and see. I still believe we're going to get two more trailers. I know we're getting close. We're getting close to the release date. I, I realize that. I do believe, though, we're going to get two more trailers. I think you're right. I think we're going to get one uh, early to mid-October. I think it's coming real soon. I, I'm surprised it hasn't happened already, to be honest. Really? Uh, like I you were expecting one already? Well, just, of course, doing this long enough, trailers just, they seem to beat the hell out of trailers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, as our friend the Sleepy Skunk got famous for, is that he constructed half of Spider-Man based on just trailer footage. Yeah, like 40-something minutes of it, yeah. 40-something minutes just out of... He basically broke down the plot line and put up more than half of the movie based on trailer footage, and that might have shifted the paradigm a little bit um, to, you know, have that... Why are we seeing so many trailers and just so much? And then I'm wondering if also some uh, number cruncher just sat down and said, is there a return on our investment by having so much money spent in the publicity and putting out 17 trailers and one for the Super Bowl and one for Comic-Con and one for this and one for that and TV spots and web only. And when they're spending all this money putting together these trailers, are they getting a return on the investment? Um, there wasn't a lot of trailers for Force Awakens. No, there, there really wasn't was a lot of trailers for Force Awakens, but do keep in mind the expensive part about trailers yeah. isn't so much the making them, it's, it's putting them on the screens it's pain for the time. That Force yeah. Awakens trailer was played a lot. I mean, I saw that all it, over the place. It was, but it also was only one trailer, which kind of brings me to the other side is, are mm. they are they trying not to spoil? Are they trying not to give too much away in the film? Because uh, doing this for a long time, um, I kind of had, I put myself in a position where I was watching trailers all the time and I was watching yeah. behind the scenes footage all the time because I was writing articles about them. But did I really want to see them myself? Uh, some things were spoiled for me because sometimes they just put the best parts in the trailer or they put now, the funny... Now, be careful. You, we're, we're starting to answer another question that's coming up a little uh, bit later. There, so. is, there is that, so I'll, I'll digress away from that. But so let's get this bottom line for you, though, Rodney. Are I, we getting I, one more trailer or are we getting two more trailers? I'm going to say one, and I'm going to save that ex ex 
I'm going to save that uh, explanation for the later question. All right. I believe, I believe, I mean, all of you, including you, Ronnie, make perfect sense. I still believe we're going to get two, but I think whether we get one or two, I still think we're probably going to get a healthy number of TV spots above Coverage. and beyond that. Yeah. Uh, they seem I, pretty uh, trigger happy on those. And it'll be pushing really hard, really late, as opposed to the yeah. whole like six months before thing is they're just going to push really hard in the last couple months leading up to. Totally agree. All right, let's move on now to the third question. And the third question today comes to us from uh, Taiwan Moore. And Taiwan Moore writes, Hello, John. I'm a huge fan and love the show. Thank you so much. My question is, short and simple, why didn't Obi-Wan just keep Luke himself? He could have had the boy trained and ready for combat by the time Leia asked for his help. Uh, let's go to you on Rodney on that one first. I mean, okay. it seems like one of those like, oh yeah, like wh why give them oh. to like Owen and Baru? Like, why not just keep them? So, the first I got two answers for this, and they're going to come from two sides of my brain. One, the guy who lives on Earth, um, is just from a practical standpoint, it's just a plot device, and it's just maybe it's a weak one, and that like you've definitely open the door on that and say like you know hey here's a here's a big plot hole like but could you imagine how long or how impactful the story would have been where luke says um help me obi-wan you're my only hope i know an obi-wan he's my master <laughs> and, and they go that's the guy and he shows up and he says let's get our lightsabers and go kick someone's ass that would be a really short movie <laughs> Luke fully, fully prepared, fully combat ready. He wouldn't blow up the Death Star. He'd just go knocking on Darth Vader's door going, yeah, remember all those birthdays you missed, dad? <laughs> you know, it just, that's not a story. So plot point is the, is my rational thinking. Right. Now, allow me to put on my fanboy hat. So here's the answer in the movie. Um, as a guy who put Jedi Knight on his census, I'm going to say... The reason that he did not put them is the same reason he separated them. Uh, I'm going to nerd out here. Vader had an ability to sense other Jedi. It was explained in some of the expanded novels and such that uh, when Vader went on the purge, he hunted Jedi by sensing them. He, right. uh, uh, Yoda deliberately hid on Dagobah because there was that dark force sensitive cave nearby. There was a cave and just was so, so much, powerful. so much life on Dagobah. It just, it's just too much. Yeah, he was hidden, and he, and he didn't use his powers much. He stayed low key. He stayed everything down, and there was so much life force going on. Plus, this dark side cave there that's explained in the novel so much. But the, he hid deliberately there. He could have gone anywhere where he could take a bath. The, he went there for a reason, and I think that's why as they explained at the end of episode three, they separate the kids because he doesn't want that much force power in one spot. And then on top of that, he didn't train him to use his force powers because then he would be exhibiting them. Rumors right. might've, the rumors might've started flying. Hey, there's a guy doing strange things. You know, there's all this stuff. There's a reason why Obi-Wan Kenobi is known as just a hermit. People didn't think he was, Oh, there's that crazy Jedi who lives in the mountains. No, he was just a guy. Right. He kept his powers on the low key. Luke didn't get trained, so he didn't grow in his powers. Now he had natural powers, and we see how that goes. But the reason he didn't train him is that deep down, he hoped he would never have to. I think, okay, see, now there is where you start to get into the territory that I was actually going to cover, which is, I think there's a couple of practical things. Practical thing number one, Obi-Wan don't know squat about raising a baby or taking care of a baby. That's, I mean, that, that is not a small thing to keep in mind. Like if somebody, let's say you don't have any kids and somebody just walked up to you in the street and said, Hey, here's a brand new baby. Go take care of it by yourself. You might not think you're, you yeah, like you might, <laughs> you might not necessarily think that you're the right guy for the job. But yep. the second thing, and this is, this kind of overlaps with what you were saying a little bit, Rodney, for me, it's this, I don't think Obi-Wan, look, it's not like. The mission of taking the twins away was to prepare them both so that one day they can face Vader and the Emperor. No, I think the whole point of taking them away was that 
I don't think Ben Kenobi ever wanted Luke to even know who his father was. I don't think Obi-Wan or Yoda ever intended that someday they're going to help us fight the Empire. No, it was just to hide them. Keep them because in the hands of Vader and the Emperor, they knew Luke could become an incredibly lethal weapon. Leia could become a lethal weapon. It was all about that. And that's why you get to that moment in episode four when... Luke brings the message to Obi-Wan, help me Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. He sits there and you see him pondering and you see Obi-Wan thinking for a moment and then he just, he does this with his eyes. You must learn the ways of the Force if you're going to come. Like right there, Obi-Wan, he made the decision, well, it's, it's, we've got to do something. It's time. Luke needs to pick up the same. He waited out and he said, here, I guess we're going this way. Yeah. So ultimately, I think the bottom line is there's a whole lot of reasons why Ben wouldn't have just kept Luke. What does he know about raising a baby? It's safer in the hands of his own family, hiding him in plain sight, keeping them away, keeping the force powers under wrap, all that kind of stuff. So I think there are a lot of reasons. Putting him on a planet that Anakin hated. Yes, and would probably and never yeah. wanted to go back to. Yep. So, but the other question, guys, what do you guys think? Jump into the comment section, leave your thoughts. All right, let's move on to question number four now. And question number four goes something like this. Chris Hester writes, why would a company like Lucasfilm that always holds its cards close to the vest reveal the fate of Leia in The Last Jedi? The answer to me is that they wouldn't. Just because Lucasfilm stated that there was a larger role for her in episode nine does not mean that that is the truth. How do we know that is not a misdirect and that Leia actually isn't killed off in episode eight? All right. Thanks a lot for the question, man. And I'm, I'm going to take this one first here. Look, so we all know that following the passing and the tragic passing of Carrie Fisher, that Shortly thereafter, Lucasfilm did talk a little bit about episode nine. And one of the things they said was, you know, compounding the tragedy is that Leia played a major role in what our plans were for episode nine, that major plans. So what is being suggested here in the email is that, hey, what if that was a misdirect by the studio just throwing us off the scent? What if Leia actually dies in The Last Jedi? Here's what I would say to that. I would say no chance. Now, not no chance that she dies in The Last Jedi. That might be something that they changed after her passing. They might have changed that. But I do not believe for a second that them saying Leia was going to play a major role in Episode Nine was any kind of a misdirect. And the reason I don't think it was a misdirect is because it would be incredibly poor taste to two weeks after Carrie Fisher dies using her death as an excuse to do a audience misdirect yuck yuck it would be an incredibly poor taste and you know what say what you will about lucasfilm and some of the criticisms that some people have about you know the way the director situations have been handled and things like that they cherished carrie fisher they cherished carrie fisher they always have been royalty to them yeah and they they would the, the notion that they would use that tragedy just weeks after her death to, hey, let's use this as a misdirect gimmick to our audience. Yuck, yuck. I I just think that would be an incredibly poor taste. Look, I'm not putting it be- beyond Lucasfilm to do misdirects. Sure, that, that could be fun. Where, where appropriate. Where appropriate. <laughs> but like in a situation like this, I, I just, it would be, I would be pissed as a fan, I would be pissed if that was the case. And obviously, we would never know anyway. But I just don't think it was something they would do. I think it would be an incredibly poor taste. And I don't think they would do it. Now, that does, however, bring up a secondary question, which is, okay, well, whether her being a major role in Episode Nine was a misdirect or not, fact of the matter is, Carrie Fisher is no longer with us. So they got to do something. Could Carrie, could Leia straight up die? In episode eight, could they have reshot some stuff, moved some scenes around? Could they set it up so Leia dies in episode eight? Rodney, what do you think? Do you think do you think Leia is still alive by the end of episode nine? No, or it's by the end of episode eight, I should say, knowing what we know now. There's there's so many films where, unfortunately, like you know, a star dies in the process of, and of course, it changes everything. 
it changes your future plans. It probably changes the film you're in. Um, you know, like, uh, like Heath Ledger, uh, Ryan Walker, like th these happening during filming where you're like, what do we do now? You know, like maybe they wanted to use the Joker as a, a villain in the next one as well or something or, or late, bring him back later. Not so much anymore. They had to change plans. And I think that's honestly all that's happened here is that they've, they've been forced to change their plans. I think that like, just like you said, is when they, when they said, you know, we had bigger plans for her character in episode nine. I think that was just them kind of coping or, or venting mm -hmm. a little. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, Hey man, like Carrie's gone. Like this is, this is terrible news. Like, you know, and, and we were planning on using more Carrie, like, you know, there's, they didn't say it as like, you know, a joke. They were just like, yeah. you know, this changes stuff guys. Like, like we, we feel this on all levels, like emotionally and financially and the film and the franchise and everything changes now because, you know, our princess is gone. So do they, are they going to kill her off in, in the movie? I think, and I think tactfully, they may just simply have her play her part in episode seven and then, or in episode eight. eight and then when, ten, when nine comes out, They'll be in the crawl with the passing of General Organa Solo, you know, just when when she just having it, you know, be backstory, you know, just just a nod to the character and move forward. They are trying to move forward with an entirely new generation of characters. I so, no, I, I understand. And I think I think what you're suggesting is a huge possibility. Mm -hmm. I hope that's not the idea to me of either Luke. Han or Leia being killed off off camera and in between yeah. movies. It, there's just something about that. There's something about the real side of the real side of her dying that makes that a little less harsh. Yes, we if you have an epic character that's been a part of the saga for so long, you definitely want that. But remember, they filmed all of episode seven with no Luke. Yeah. Like, yeah, but they didn't would... say he died. They didn't say. No, no, they didn't say if, he died. Imagine but episode they... seven started with the crawl. Instead of <laughs> Luke Skywalker is miss has vanished. Luke Skywalker has died. I was like, what? He's vanished. <laughs> Just drag it on for three more movies. Luke Skywalker has vanished. We don't know where he is. The end of like episode twenty five. We found his corpse. Yeah, it's Ray. <laughs> Ray gets to that island just to find him dead. I mean, yeah, that that yeah. would be that would be no good. I and think he, I course. think they are going to kill off Leia in Episode Eight. I I, I, th I think they would have made a change. Uh, I wouldn't put money on this, by the way. I don't feel very yeah. confident in that. But no, I don't. <laughs> I, but if I had to lean like fifty one percent one way, I'm going to go fifty one percent that I think they probably have Leia heroically dying in eight. Um, yep. I just, just again, as a fan for me, something just doesn't feel right about having our princess pass away in between movies. It, it something I, and I know they're in a very difficult position. It's a, it's a rock they and are. a hard place. They Cause you know, when uh, but, they killed off, when they killed off uh, Han Solo, spoiler alert, when they kill off Han Solo, that character, the actor who played that character wasn't dead. So there was no yeah. parallel to play there. Yeah, it's, it's just true. And the only parallel is that, uh, Harrison Ford wanted out an empire, yeah. but the, uh, um, he finally got his wish, but the, but to move forward with that and have do I, this is why I think it's going to lean the other way because they killed Han Solo. Right. If, they, if they make another major character die in the next movie, it's just going to feel like they're killing off the old guys, bringing in the new guys, you know, are we just, instead of just focusing on the new guys, we're actually going to kill them off. We're giving you no choice, but to pay attention to these new guys. Well, so that's what they did in transformers. The, remember oh, the transformers yeah. animated movie, just oh, yeah. kill them all in the first the 10 minutes. Yeah. That's like opening credits. And uh, here, you, know, here you go, kids oh, the, buy all the new the toys. Most amazing animated sequence of Optimus prime ever. It's like, Oh my God, this is so cool. He's kicking so much, but he's yep. dead. Oh, well, <laughs> Well, there, there goes uh, Blue Streak. There goes Sunstreaker. There goes Prowl. Yeah. There goes Hound. There goes oh, look, just, they're all there. Goes Ironside. They're they're all dying. It just made room for more toys. All right, we got to move on now. Let's get on to the next question. And the next question today comes to us from Owen Kane. And Owen Kane writes: Mark Hamill recently hinted at a Star Wars trailer coming during a football game, which we talked about a little bit earlier. Yeah. 
But both Mark and Ryan Johnson told us to stay clear of everything you can. So, mm. should we watch the trailer? Or shouldn't we? So, Rodney, let's. we started yeah. to get into this a, a little bit ago. And, is, and I think that's probably why it was in my head is because I we had talked, talked about this question. But the uh, having this question in front of me is that when the directors are saying, please don't watch stuff. Well, <laughs> the, mar the marketing team was probably like, what, what do you don't? <laughs> like, stop telling them no. Um, that's our job. Now you made our job harder because you're telling the fans not to watch the trailer and it's our job to put out a trailer. <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, I, I think that's part of it is that these guys, how much are you going to show us without showing us stuff? And they want the movie to be a surprise. I mm. went on a, a blackout. I'm very heavily involved in social media. I'm heavily involved on Facebook and stuff. Um, last year when, uh, a year before, sorry, when episode seven came out, of course, that was a big deal for me. Oh uh, yeah. That was, that was, uh, that was episode one all over again, but with faith, the, uh, <laughs> cause remember, you know, we, we went from like 84, 85, 84 to 97. <laughs> yeah. It was big stretch. That's a long time with nothing but Ewok movies and the droids TV show. Um, that's all I had to keep Star Wars alive in my heart. So when episode one came out, it was like, it was pretty awesome, but it was candy coated because I was just, it was more Star Wars. I just had to have it. And as time sinks in, you just kind of go, yeah, it's all right. And right. then people are like, no, it wasn't all right. This is what Star what episode seven was for me. And this is where I'm kind of getting at is the avoiding watching the trailers. I watched the first teaser and then the trailer and that was it. Really? That was it. I did not, I have blacked out. I was already, I was no longer writing for uh, a media source. So I was out. So I turned off Facebook for two weeks. I was working management and retail and I had the authority to write up staff if they told me something. <laughs> I literally had my superiors say that could be considered workplace harassment. <laughs> And I literally told everybody, like, this is this is serious. And the worst part about this was we had planned to see this on Christmas Day with my family. And if right. you remember, the movie came out like a week previous. Yes. So the movie came out in like the 17th or 19th or whatever it was. And I had to wait until Christmas Day. So we had bought like the D-Box seats and we made a big deal of it. And we had a, a huge part of it was going to see this movie. Like, so I had built up going to see episode seven so much that I blocked out seeing anything. So seeing any of this stuff, like I didn't watch any trailers. People would be like, did you hear this rumor? Shut up. You know, like I just, I wouldn't listen to anybody. I was very hard to deal with. If anybody brought it up, uh, the worst part is when people thought it was a joke to go, Hey, I got a spoiler about star Wars ships blow up. <laughs> and you'd just be like, okay, I was going to kill you halfway through that sentence. And now I just think you're a jerk. So like just that whole time of just that built up anticipation of not, not reading articles, not going online, not going on, uh, talking to people about it. And people I know who had seen the movie, I was like, I don't even want your review, good or bad. I just don't. And when I went and saw that movie, I'd seen it clean eyes. And uh, I almost broke my wife's hand when Han Solo was killed. Because <laughs> I, I reached over and held her hand. Like I was heartbroken. Like when that happened, I was just like, is that what, because you see that, you know, that build up and it's like, is he really going to, is he going to, is he going to, no, he's not going to, he's, he did. And then I was like, I was in tears behind my 3D glasses. Like I was just, it was bad. But and now to be fair. Oh, by the way. It was there because I get not, I had no idea it was coming. Well, yeah, but, but to be fair, it's not like they showed Han getting killed in the trailers. No, um, but, but oh, Facebook that, could have ruined that for me too. It could. Oh, well, yeah. The social, social media is a totally yeah. different thing. Yeah. I only, I only want to bring this up because I haven't really had a chance to talk to Rodney about it, but talking about waiting till Christmas day, I didn't have, I didn't have to wait till Christmas day. There's my, uh, yeah. I got, it was, I was, I got to go to the world premiere. Most of you guys know that, which was a lot of fun. Um, to me, I don't care. Yeah. I like to me, trailers are, they, they give me quick glimpses and looks inside, but really all that does for me, I mean, as long as you don't get, like if they had a trailer for Star Wars Episode Seven and they ended up showing me the scene where they kill Han Solo, that's one thing. That's a, that's a horse of a totally different color, absolutely. But for me, 
like watching the trailers and stuff like that, they just actually, more than anything else, they get me more curious. They get me more excited. I don't feel like they really give away a lot of the story per se. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing is, and I guess that really comes down to the other side of the coin is if a trailer is well done. I yes. think there should be. An, I should. I think there should be an Oscar for trailers. Like, see, I don't. I actually, you know what's funny? That it's funny you bring that up because actually, on the John Campion show the other day, somebody specifically asked that question. Somebody specifically said, "Do you think there should be a, a new category for Oscars?" And the reason I'm against it. Well, first of all, there are award ceremonies for there the marketing. Is, yeah, yeah, they do have those awards. Marketing, uh, yeah. But here's my reasoning for why I do not think I, I would be absolutely against them having. Um, uh, like a trailer things is because of this. Every single category at the Academy Awards, whether it's costuming, makeup, sound editing, sound design, cinematography, acting, editing, directing, um, all that, all that stuff, producing every single category is about people who contributed to the making of that film. They, they're, they're all artists in different disciplines that use their creative art to make that film a reality. Yes. Marketing is something that happens after the film's already made. Like the film's done. Yes. We're not actually putting anything into the movie, but we will make trailers for the movie and help the movie be successful for Financial. sure. Yeah. But that's, that's the only reason I would be against that. So bottom line, Rodney, let's say Mark Hamill was right and he wasn't fooling with us. And on October 9th, there's going to be a brand new trailer. Are you watching it? On October 8th, when they put it on the internet? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. And, uh, the, and I am Every absolutely. time they do it, because they say like, you know, every, they make such a big deal about it. They're like, you know, go and watch the Super Bowl commercial. Go and watch the sneak preview of movie X on the, on the Super Bowl. And literally two days before Super Bowl, it's online. Well, yeah, yeah. I I got a feeling. Why did but, you pay a gazillion dollars for Super Bowl? But Bowl here's the thing: that Force Awakens one, when they put the trailer up with the uh, the Monday Night Football game, yep, it didn't leak. Dis yeah. Disney's been really pretty leak. good at keeping things yeah. from getting leaked out. So I we'll have to wait and see. All right, yeah. let's move on. I think we got uh, two more questions here. Let's yep. move on to the next question. And the next question comes to us from Justin Westwood, and Justin Westwood writes. Love your content. Thank you so much, Justin. Keep it coming. You mentioned once, you know, the spoiler of all spoilers for The Last Jedi. Does knowing a major spoiler for such a big movie lessen your excitement? Well, thanks a lot for the question, Justin. Um, Yeah, so I, I revealed uh, on a show I did with Josh McCuga a number of months ago that, yeah, I, I know the spoiler of all spoilers for uh episode uh, for episode eight and i told josh mccuga so he can confirm later after the movie comes out that it is the spoiler that, that i had in mind does knowing such a spoiler ruin my excitement honestly no it it and honestly doesn't if anything for me kind of like we were talking about the trailers was that it just gets me even more curious and more interesting it's like I wonder what the circumstances will be surrounding that, that like thing. that whole sort of thing. And like, I, I know it's not a, an apples to apples comparison, but you know, think of Titanic. I watched Titanic. I, I know, know how ship, Titanic ends. You know the ship went down. <laughs> it's about the journey getting there. I know yeah. Lincoln dies. I know Daniel Day Lewis dies at the end of Lincoln, but it's about we knew for three movies that Anakin was going to go bad. Yeah, we we always knew Anakin was going to go bad. Um, we know at some point Yoda's going to be sent on the run. The, you know, all, we know that there's going to be these spoiler alert. Padme's going to get pregnant and she's going to have twins. No kidding, we know that. Um, so, like, look, that's not an excuse for other people to go and give away spoilers. Nope. But I find that for me, it generally doesn't hurt me all that much. Now, I know a lot of people, a lot of my good friends detest like spoilers really ruin their their experience of the movie and that's cool that's why you'll you know i i'm very sensitive about spoilers but to me it really doesn't hurt me so knowing what i know doesn't really hurt me what about you right have you ever been in a situation where you knew like in advance whether you wanted to know or didn't want to know some kind of significant spoiler about a movie or a tv show or something and that it affected you very much one way or the other um on some films where i'm a little less passionate about it's actually made me not go Really? Um, like, just, I can't think of any specific examples off the top of my head, but I know there's movies where, you know, those, you watch the trailer and you're like, well, there's the whole plot. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 
you know, just, you could have saved that for the twist in the movie or you, you know, you set up the premise already in the trailer, stop talking, you know, like, and then they go, you know, and then you won't believe what happens next. And, you know, they're, you know, and now she's pregnant. It's like, well, you didn't have to put that in the trailer. Like just leave it out. So the, there have been movies where I've watched the trailer and I'm like, I feel like I've watched it. The only like time, the, movie. the only time I've had a spoiler given to me that really hurt me. And so I'm going to give you guys now a spoiler alert. This is pertaining to Sons of Anarchy. Okay. This is pertaining to Sons of Anarchy. If you haven't watched Sons of Anarchy and you're planning on it, tune out for about 30 seconds here. Okay. I think your statute of limitations is already up on this one. But I know, but just to be safe. <laughs> yeah. um, so one of my favorite characters was Opie. Totally was Opie. And when Ope, and on Twitter, I couldn't be at home the one night that this one episode of Sons of Anarchy was on because I was out of town and I'm on Twitter, stupid me, and all of my Twitter, Twitter feed, no, Ope, R-I-P, Ope. Oh my God, I can't believe they killed Ope. And I'm like, are you effing kidding me? And I hadn't seen the episode and I lost my mind. That's the one time yeah. that I got a spoiler and it really, really affected me. It drove me crazy when I found that out. Uh, the the one thing I'm actually going to make you share a story here, John, because this oh. is something that happened way back uh -oh. uh, when episode one was coming out. Okay. And you were being very careful about spoilers back then. And yes. Do you remember going into a Toys R Us and having an experience? Oh, crap. Little talking action figure. That's right. Where you, you hit it and it was actually saying, and it revealed things about the little the toy and you held it up to the action figure and it would say a phrase that the character says. Yeah. But even that wasn't as bad. You remember this? Yeah. Um, for the, most of you guys will know this one, but remember when the soundtrack came out two weeks before the movie? And, and one the of title the, of one of the tracks was <laughs> Qui-Gon's Noble End. It's like, well, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Qui-Gon's Noble End. I guess Liam Neeson Thanks, doesn't make it out of this. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's get on now. We got to get this thing moving. Let's go on to the last question now. His noble and end was at his retirement party. Yeah, the, <laughs> it was, the, it was cake. <laughs> the last question today comes to us from Koba and Koba writes, many people, uh, many people's big complaint with revenge of the Sith is the way Padme dies a broken yeah. heart. However, many people have made a theory that it was in fact Palpatine who used the force to drain the life out of her. Do you think that that theory has any merit? Rodney, let's start with you. What do you think about that fan theory uh, that well, it was actually Palpatine on, that killed her? Yeah. To elaborate on the fan theory is because of the way it was presented in the film is that they kind of happen at the same time. And there was definitely a, a cinematic parallel of her death and his rebirth. And that's kind of where it comes from is that they think that, um, you know, only a Sith could teach him how to avoid death. And I think that was the ability that he used to draw the life force out of someone he was connected to and put it into him so that he would not die. Um, and he took it out of Padme because then he could use that as a, as a tool to fuel his rage. And while it's not mentioned or verified, I think it's a valid theory. I, I won't go on record to go, yep, that's what happened. It's a valid theory because we don't have anything to contradict it. We don't have anything to say that's not what he did. You know, was it a cinematic tool just to be a, uh, a dramatic parallel? Or is that what really happened when he breathed new life into Rise Vader? Say no really poorly. <laughs> well, okay. I I think here's here's the one thing that makes me not buy into the theory. Okay. And that you're right. It's a very interesting theory because if you structure the theory a certain way, you, you could say, oh, well, look, you can make the pieces fit. I mean, like you were saying, right? Here's my big problem with such a theory. My problem with such a theory is that it assumes that Palpatine has the power that he can literally just pick anybody in the universe, reach across the galaxy and say, you die right now. If that were the case, then, you know, the moment they go, oh, my Lord, um, turns out that traitor, Princess Leia, she's one of the leaders of the rebellion and she escaped the Death Star. No problem. Okay, she's dead. Don't worry, guys. She's dead. My Lord, there's an X-Wing that got away down the trench. She's getting away from Vader. No problem. I got this. He's dead. Like the ability there, you create a whole bunch of plot holes, I think. I'm going to jump on it. Okay, give it, give it to me. Vader choked a... 
uh, general over Skype. <laughs> over Skype, yes. But remember, their <laughs> ships were right beside each other, though. Like they were, they were at least right there beside each other. Yoda I, said, "Size doesn't matter." Uh, size doesn't matter. But I'm just saying, if <laughs> if the Emperor has the ability, if we him. say he's got the ability that at any time he wants, he can just reach across the galaxy. And put a in in Harry Potter terms, put a death curse on somebody. Sure. Then why is the rebellion a problem for him? <laughs> like, why is that an issue? So that's the only thing that gives me pause I about like that a challenge. Theory. <laughs> but you know what I really think it is? Here's what I really think it is. I think that theory, God bless us all, is our own community as Star Wars fans so desperate to explain the stupidity oh, yeah. of that scene. I mean, one line of dialogue. The droid, who has no feelings or emotions and all the medical history of everything in its banks, is looking over her going, I can solve any problem. I don't know what's wrong with her. And it's like, what do you mean you don't know what's wrong? This is the first time this has ever happened? They go one step beyond that. She says, medically, there's nothing wrong with her. Medically. She's like literally but she's dying. Upset. Wait a minute. You can't say on one hand... There's nothing wrong with her and then say she's dying. If she's yeah. dying, if you know she's dying, something she's dying is, of something. You've got, you've got evidence of the dying. <laughs> Let's just trace this back. Yeah, so I think oh, this the theory, <laughs> as as creative as the theory is, yeah. I think that theory, the, the, the heart of that theory is just us as fans desperately trying to it's make up an mechanism. excuse <laughs> for that horrible, horrible, horrible scene in he which was otherwise... You- probably the best of the prequels. I mean, Revenge of the Sith is yeah. probably the best of the prequels. Oh, it's I where think... all the emotional impact comes together, right? But yeah. The, but have it, But even if that droid had just said, she's, she, we're losing her, she's lost too much blood, or yes, uh, from a previous injury has complicated things, I'll try to save... Oh. So wait a second. Tell me again. Why is she dying? She's dying of a broken heart. Say that again <laughs> with a straight face. She's dying of a broken right. heart. I know you're a uh, droid yeah. and you can't say it with a straight face. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that will do it for us for this installment of Star Wars Talk Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining us. And I want to give a very special thank you to my friend Rodney Brazil for being here. Rodney, thanks so much for being here. Tell everybody where people can find you online. How can they reach out to you on social media? Uh, well, mostly you're going to find me on uh, um, uh, Twitter. I'm at Bandersnitch. Uh, I've got a little website Spell that, that out. I'm working on. Oh, Bandersnitch. B-A-N-D-E-R-S-N-I-T-C-H. Uh, that's my personal Twitter where I put a bunch of nonsense, mostly my Jeep. Um, the You can find me there. I'm also going to start up a new little blog. I've been doing it off and on a little bit. So if you want to go check it out, I, I do have a website called GloriousPorpoise.com because um, I am burdened with a glorious porpoise. That is porpoise. <laughs> like the dolphin glorious porpoise.com and of course you guys can simply follow me on facebook and on twitter you can see it right there simply at john campia that'll do it for us guys thank you much for joining us don't forget while you're here take a second click on that subscribe button become a subscriber to my youtube channel make sure you follow rodney and myself on social media send on in some more questions for the next star wars tuesday if you like this video share it around retweet it send it out on facebook do whatever you'd like to do That'll do it for us, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. And until next time, bye-bye.